everybody, Fiber Spider back again with another origami tutorial for you. And today we are going to be making a Tato envelope. Now, I'm not sure if it's Tato or Tato, but it is a traditional way of making a self closing envelope. It's really gorgeous. And I absolutely love how it's like magic. You can open it on up and keep whatever it is that you want inside of here. And then you can also close it back up, keeping whatever it is that you want nice and safe and sound and snug. And there you go. And of course, utilizing some different papers, you can create some really beautiful pieces. And this one actually was done with a, uh, a mandala style paper that I have. Absolutely gorgeous, I thought. And yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we have a bunch of preliminary folds that you're probably going to be very used to. Uh, it is the, the bird base. So starting with the colored side facing up, going to fold our piece into a triangle. And then open. Turn and do the same thing once again. There we go. And then open. And then flip it over. And then in half to make a rectangle twice. So first, one way. And then open. And turn. And then the other way. Okay. There we go. And then for the sort of traditional bird base, if you're making a, a crane or so forth, you're going to be uh, rather familiar with this step. Going to sort of squoosh the paper together like so, and then flatten it down so that you have two flaps on the one side, two flaps on the other. And then flatten like so. There we go. Okay, so now unlike if you were to do a, a crane where you would have the open bits at the bottom, turn it around so that the open bit is at the top, and then we're going to do some kite folds, folding these side edges down here to the center here. And we're going to do it on the front and then on the back. Like so. And like I said, be sure that the open bit is at the top there. So fold these, flip it on over, and do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, as a way of helping us out later, I find that doing these same folds that we're doing right now, but in reverse, really does help. So I'm going to do that really quick as well because later we're going to need these particular fold lines that we're doing right now to use as guides. So open these up. And then bring the two front flaps 
together, and then the two back flaps together, and then do the exact same thing. Is this entirely necessary? No, but I, I do think that it helps. So we're going to do the exact same thing, making these mountain folds into valley folds now. Because I had done this piece before without doing this, and honestly, I felt that it really did make a difference. And any way that I can help make this a little bit easier for you guys, hey, I think it's worth it, don't you? And then flip the whole piece over and then do the same thing with these sides. There we go. And then one last step that I also find helps is taking this, thank you, this top flap here and folding it along these two edges here. Fold it down like so, and then do the same thing on the back. And then unfold those, bring the flaps together in the opposite way. And then fold these triangles down as well, just as we did before, point to point. Now, again, this particular step that I'm doing right now, it is not necessary, but it really does help later on. And then unfold and unfold. Now, believe it or not, we unfold the entire thing. So unfold these, turn it around, and unfold these, and then open up the entire piece and lay it flat. And this, this is what we have to work with, folks. Yes. All right, let's continue. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, why did we do all of that if we just opened it all up? Well, that's because we needed all of these creases as preliminary folds for what we're going to do next. So the reason why I had us fold down those tip triangles is because this crease that we have right here, even though it is currently a, uh, a mountain fold, we just need to change that into a valley fold. So along that same crease, just fold it back. Um, if we hadn't done that step, you would have to sort of guesstimate folding from this point to this point down. But since we already did the crease, it makes it just a little bit easier because the crease is already there. We're just inverting it. So that's one of four, and then we do the same thing with the other three. Okay, then next step is we're going to be bringing this bottom edge down here to this center horizontal crease up here. And we're going to be creasing from this crease here to this crease right here. And you don't want to go all the way across, just sort of pinching in the center between here and here. So going up, lining it up in the center on that crease, and then in the middle, 
and you can kind of make out, see that's where that crease is. You don't want to go any further than that. And then on this side, where that crease is, going up to that point there. You don't want to go any further than that, but you want to give it a nice, nice crease right there. So, as you can see, we do have a little crease in between that line and that line. And we're going to do that for all four sides. And then we're going to do four more, but we'll take it one step at a time. So turn your work. And let's do the next one. Okay, in the middle. Okay, we got our crease right there. And turn. And one more. There. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, two vertical and two horizontal creases. Now we need to connect the diagonals in very much the same fashion. So bringing this flat edge up to this crease up here, I'm gonna be doing essentially the same thing. Just utilizing those creases so that we don't go any further than here or any further than here. So you can see that crease that we just made. And then we do this with all four corners. Then one more. There. So believe it or not, that is all of the preliminary creasing that we actually need to do. And now we can get finally started in the formation of the actual envelope. Now, as you can see that we have a, uh, a perfect octagon in the center, and that is exactly what we need. All right, let's move on. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. You know, just what I would strongly suggest is watch me do it first, because this is, you know, it can be a little bit daunting. I understand that. But I would say watch me do it first, then replay it, and then try to do it as you watch it, perhaps. Um, because if you try to do it as you're watching it for the first time, it might get ugly. So at any rate, going to basically, we're going to be using these inner creases that we just made, the inner octagon. We're going to be using those creases to work our next step. So along that crease that we just made, so bringing it up. And then along this crease here, bring this point over, and then going along the next octagonal crease, pinch down, bring it to the point, and bring these two sides together along this point here, along that crease that we made. And then once it has been brought together, you flatten it down. like so. And we're going to be doing this all the way around. 
And there's actually a trick that I have come up with to make it a lot easier to do the finishing. It may, see, it may seem counterproductive, but actually it works. So I'm gonna undo what I just did and show you how to do it again. So along this inner octagonal crease, bring the piece up, then along the next octagonal side, scooch down, bring the center together to a point, and then scooch it down to the side. Then we're gonna do that again. This side is already flattened down, so the next octagonal side, pinch it down, Bring this to a point. Pinch them together. So it comes to a nice point right here. And then flatten it down. So now we've got two of them done. Okay, let's do it again. So bring this up pinch down along the next inner octagon side, pinch it down a little bit, bring these edges together, and flatten it down. Now, you don't want to go further than this side. I think I may have gone a little bit too far. Let me see if I can fix that. It's not a big deal at this point because we can arrange things as needs be. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, next side. Flatten along that side there. Bring it to a point, and then Flatten it down, do the next one. Scooch it down, bring it to a point. trickiness with this one, bear with me. Okay, I think I got it. There we go, I got it. And then scooch it down, like so. Now, the tricky part is finishing this guy. Now, what I'm gonna show you, like I said, it's gonna seem counterproductive, but it makes the rest of it that much easier. So at this point, what I would suggest, take it for what it's worth, is to actually undo what you just did. Don't worry, those creases are still gonna be there. But we've gotten to this point, right? Well, redo the one that we just did and then finish up the rest of these. And then finishing it up will be that much easier in the long run. So then we finish this one up. And then the last one. Bring these together. Fold it on down. There we go. And we already did these over here, right? So all we need to do is just work our magic. So bring this one down. And then bring the next one down. There we go. And the next.
next one. And the last one always wants to fight with you. I know. But if you're patient, you will succeed. Like that. <laughs> now, I realize there was a lot of fiddling and finagling and shaking involved. Yes, I know, my hands are shaky, um, but it does work, okay? And the reason why I had us undo what we did is because, yes, um, to fiddle with the, the last one or two of these little flaps, it can be very, very difficult, but uh, by undoing what we had done and then utilizing those flaps later because they were already pre-folded for us and preconditioned for us, it made it a lot easier in the grand scheme of things. So then all you have to do if you want to open it up, as I showed before, you know, perfect for holding, you know, loose change, what have you. And then we can fold it up just as easily, well, relatively speaking. Just bring our flaps in like so. And then occasionally one or two of them wants to be a little, a little curmudgeon -y and be fiddly and difficult, but there you go. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely love it. And I hope that my explanations were clear and concise and, you know, I hope you guys got it <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it, yes. Alrighty, my dears, so that concludes today's video on how to make a Tato origami envelope. I really, really like these. Now, as I said, there are a number of different variations of envelopes as well as boxes utilizing the same sort of self-closing with the, the scores and the folding sort of thing. In fact, many, many moons ago, uh, I had been to, it was Epcot Center in Disney, and in, I believe it was Morocco, there was a lot of really cool leather working, and it was actually the first time that I saw something similar to this. It was a leather coin purse that folded up in a similar fashion, and I was absolutely mesmerized by it. And I'm so glad that I found something in a much easier to work equivalent because I don't think that I'm quite up to leather working. Paper, much more doable. And I hope that you liked it too. And if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation as always. And stay tuned for more because whether it is origami or audiobook narrations or cooking or crocheting, knitting, you name it, I, I like to do it all. And check out the other videos on this playlist. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired Stay caffeinated, stay folding fun, fabulous things, and stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.